Hello everyone. Welcome you all to the Tech Gig webinar. Thank you for joining the session today. The topic of today's talk is a prelude to Race 360, computer vision and face recognition using Python, a demo. It will be a one hour session with around 40 to 45 minutes for the presentation and the remaining time for the Q&A. So if you have any questions, please send them to us using the questions tab on the go to webinar control panel. I am Anmol, the moderator of this session and it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to our guest speaker, Mr. Ratnakar Pandey, Head Analytics and Data Science at Cabbage Inc. Ratnakar has more than 15 years of experience in analytics and data science fields at Cabbage and is leading the machine and deep learning models development activity across customer life cycle from acquisition to customer engagement to fraud prevention to risk based underwriting policy development. Prior to joining Cabbage, he has been part of the data science leadership team in City Group, Target, Texas Instruments, and few startups in India. So without any further delay, let me introduce you all to our guest speaker. Over to you, Ratnakar. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Anmol, for the introduction. Guys, can you uh, confirm whether you can hear me loud and clear? Any challenges on the voice, let me know. And uh, we will start since we have only one hour to cover the topic today. So uh, with the introduction, I would like to uh, give you a brief about the computer vision. Uh, so I can give you the uh, the background or the motivation behind you know why we are talking about the computer vision what is a computer vision uh, and this is for the folks who have zero or medium level of awareness of the computer vision and the python programming and so on and so forth right so if you're already at the expert level uh, probably this may not be something that will directly sink in um, so i'm pitching it in a way that people who have very little background they can also follow what i'm doing because the application is such that everybody is, uh, you know, sort of like should be aware of this and they can use it in their day to day life, right? So that is the main motivation behind that. Now, as we uh, speak, um, I have already shared a bunch of links with you guys. Uh, make sure that you bookmark these links and the presentation that we are using now is already uploaded in the slide share uh, link that I have already mentioned over here in this screen. Uh, so do make a note and you can actually have this presentation for your reference later on uh, as convenient, right? So it may not have all the functionalities which I'm going to show you because PowerPoint versus the PDF uh, mismatch, but nevertheless, uh, you will have, uh, you know, good amount of information there. Um, so I'm assuming everybody is able to hear me okay, so we will move forward. Uh, welcome everyone one more time. Uh, I am RP um, and I will sort of like you know take you through the computer vision as a field and then give you a demo right so let's begin with the question what is a computer vision right and we are looking at a definition from wikipedia uh, which says that the computer vision is an interdisciplinary field right and let me just uh, get my marker up and running so hold on just a second uh, all right so what i'm going to do is i will also write on the screen so you can see what exactly i'm highlighting right so as you can see the key operating word over here is that this is interdisciplinary field and this is not just about the data science this is just not about the programming this is not about the mathematics or the linear algebra it involves a variety of different fields altogether right and what is the main purpose of that the main purpose of that is to really give the power to the computers to see as we human do right and the image that you see over here is basically what the computer vision is all about so imagine if you have a computer sitting in your office or in your home if that computer can see the objects as you and i can see or even a small kid can see that is the ability that we want to inculcate in a computer and it's quite powerful as we will see uh, in the next few slides, what are the applications around us, right? Uh, so if somebody asks you, you know, what is a computer vision? That is the definition that you're actually looking at, providing that uh, skill set to the computer where they can look at the objects, recognize the objects, recognize the people, can differentiate a cat from a dog, can know whether this is, uh, you know, some celebrity and so on and so forth, right? 
and uh, as i mentioned earlier it will really take you know a different set of uh, skill sets to be really successful in this uh, field and it takes a variety of different skill sets right uh, yes i will go to that mode in a minute so here are some images for the use of computer vision right so you can see there is a you know variety of different things that we have highlighted over here right so obviously you're looking at the self-driving car right and there's a lot of buzz around um, you know at least in the western countries where you don't need to have a human to drive the car and the car is going to be self-driven right uh, the million dollar question there is that how would that be possible right and the crux of the self-driving car or the engine behind that is nothing but a computer vision the car should be able to see the objects on the road the obstructions on the road whether the signal is green or red and so on and so forth and take the decision in real time the decision part is already figured in the part that uh, we are still sort of like you know uh, working on or the community is working on is the part where you have to get that ability in a very very refined way where the objects can be recognized without uh, significant error right the second example that you see on your screen is uh, robotics right and in this case it's a mars rover sent by us to mars right where no human can go you really have a big handicap right you really cannot figure out what is there how would you take the pictures are there rocks are there water uh, what is the environment like right are there any foreign objects and stuff like that so you really cannot see any of those unless you have a robot uh, which can go analyze the things relay the images back and forth and do these things uh, for you right so that is the sort of uh, uh, application in the robotics and it's just not limited to uh, the mars or any of the space mission any sort of robots that you see in the real world will have that right and we will uh, i think there's a lot of uh, questions coming up as well so what we will do people since we have a big audience we have 300 plus people uh, what we'll be doing is we will be taking a question or taking uh, you know several questions towards the end uh, once we finish the presentation because i do have a lot of material to cover uh, because of the diversity of the folks we have so i will give you something very easy i will give you something a little bit more complex and then we can actually take it from there right so the next uh, you know use case that we've highlighted over here is uh, the sentiment analysis right so when you look at a person whether that person is happy sad or what exactly is the mood of the person and i will give you a demonstration of that uh, using the google sorry using the google api right uh, that will be very very straightforward application that you can start to use from today itself right uh, over here is uh, where the medical science industry or the healthcare industry is really very very enthusiastic and which is the case of the medical imaging right you have tons of tons of mris x-rays uh, scans coming in how would you know whether the scan that you're looking at is a normal scan or something uh, looks uh, different in that or there is an anomaly as we call it right uh, so one option is you can have a set of doctors take a look at it but we are already short on the doctors so if you look at the countries like india we are already short on the doctors in terms of the population that we have so the solution that we have is can we automate some of these things and can we have machines take a look uh, on our behalf and flag those uh, you know different looking x-rays mris and scans and so on and so forth and then the doctors can take it from there right so i think everybody has uh, you know watched the movie uh, from where i have grabbed this uh, picture from and the talk about that is the animation and the special effects that you see in the different movies right and uh, that is also enabled by the computer vision uh, the next application over here is you can think about a traffic control or traffic monitoring or you can think about the surveillance as well right so i have a camera installed on a busy street and there's uh, you know typical things that i should be seeing right now imagine there is an object sitting right in the middle of the road and that object should not be there immediately i know there is something funny right so that it could be a bomb or it could be something which can disrupt the traffic so people use the computer vision to really do the surveillance and identify any uh, objects of interest and any objects that should not belong there right i have another use case which is what we call as the optical character recognition or the ocr 
right? Some of you might be uh, familiar or using this term. So you get bunch of uh, you know uh, pictures. Uh, people upload their scanned tax forms. This uh, upload their scanned Aadhaar card, PAN card, Social Security card, and so on and so forth, right? Now, if you have to glean the information from there in an automated way, uh, it's very, very difficult unless you deploy a computer vision tool. And OCR is also enabled by the CV, right? So from here on, I'm gonna use CV as a short for computer vision. So it's one and the same thing. And uh, so what is it that is driving the need for the computer vision? That's the next logical question. Why are we talking about this? Why is it that there is so much enthusiasm around it, right? And what are the driving forces behind that? So I would ask you to focus your attention first on this portion, right? So here are some of the driving factors behind that, right? So the first factor, which is probably one of the most important factor and where people uh, hope to see a lot of value coming in because of the computer vision is the need for automation, right? Uh, you see that uh, a lot of blue collar jobs are lost and things are being replaced with the the robots and stuff like that, particularly in the manufacturing world or even in a lot of operational areas, right? Uh, so that's where the need for automation is driving the computer vision. And, uh, you know, more and more tools and techniques and softwares are coming in the market and APIs which enable you to do that uh, at a click of a button, right? The other factor which is actually making the computer vision uh, one of the most popular techniques uh, or area for us to really look into is the availability of the cheap memory and storage, right? Because whenever you're talking about the CV, uh, you're talking about tons and tons of images and videos, right? And you got to have a place where you can store that and where you can you know, pull out the information and you can use it for something and then you can again uh, draw the insights and send it to your stakeholders. So for that, I mean, cheaper memory and storage is vital and which is exactly what we're looking at. So the cost of the memory has gone down, the storage is omnipresent, uh, everybody is walking around with 128, uh, 56 GB of phones and so on and so forth, right? So that's basically the diving factor behind, the, the second diving factor behind that. The third thing is the explosion of the visual data, right? If all you have is numerical data, if all you have is Excel tables and Word documents and stuff like that, uh, probably you do not require that much of a CV. So the reason why you have uh, more of a need of the CV is because the pictures and the videos or what we call as the, uh, the dense data uh, in terms of the structure of the data is actually getting more prevalent, right? So if you just look at your day-to-day -day life, you are sharing pictures on WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagrams, and all the social media, you have emails coming in with that, right? You have tons of apps which are sharing the uh, different photographs and the pictures of the products and so on and so forth, right? And obviously these pictures are coming from somewhere and they are coming from the cameras that we have. Everybody has a camera right now. Uh, unless you go to a very, very remote area in uh, a developing country, pretty much everybody walking on the road has a camera. And because they have a camera, they have the pictures and videos. And because they have the pictures and videos, that needs to be analyzed in order to uh, do something meaningful out of that, right? And the last but not least is the development in terms of the uh, the algorithms and uh, the computational power, right? Uh, because if you have all of the above things, but you really do not have um, a way to look into this data, a way to take the information from this data, then that will not be very, very effective. So there has been a tremendous progress in terms of the algorithms, and we'll be looking at some of those algorithms. And the package that I'm going to show you today is very, very simple. One line of code, and you will do the facial recognition and stuff like that, right? So the, the main overarching theme for all the driving factors is that there has been uh, you know, conducive environment in terms of the memory, in terms of the data being present, and in terms of the algorithms which can handle that data, right? So that's the sort of like, you know, the driving factors. Now, what could be the potential impact, right? So this is a picture I have taken from the source that I have mentioned at the bottom, right? And you can look at the uh, figures there. And these figures are very, very conservative estimation, right? Um, I will not go through each one of them, but I will just talk about, you know, something as trivial as, um, let me just hit my marker again, something as trivial as, uh, for example, oranges, right? So there is in states like Florida or the other states in US where they cultivate orange, right? 
four billion dollar of orange crops is lost because of the diseases right and these are big farms right so it's very very difficult for a human to go and monitor each one of them so what if i have you know a device which takes the pictures of different areas of the farm and relays it back and immediately people are able to look into that and they can take the proactive action they can have the pesticide or whatever treatment is required to uh, save the crop right so that could be the potential saving that we are looking at another number is uh, facial recognition in the demo that we are talking about today uh, the estimate uh, is that, that by 2020 uh, sorry 2022 the market for the facial recognition itself just the face recognition we're not talking about the objects just the face recognition itself is going to be valued around 10 billion dollars right um if you have insurance related things that's 40 billion dollars and so on so forth so i'll leave it there because we have other things to cover as well but you can see that anything and everything to do with the computer vision can potentially has uh, a game changing impact in any field of your choice whether it's the medical whether it's the technology whether it's the agriculture whether it's the finance anything that you can think about could be affected uh, or could be influenced by the computer vision in the positive way and it can be deployed and that's why you see there is a sort of like you know hype around this uh, phrase right now and a lot of people are actually doing cool stuff in this area right uh, let me pause here uh, shall i take a few questions now and more or towards the end what do you suggest or let me know if I'm going too fast, too slow. Uh, Ratnakar, uh, I think we take it towards the end. Okay, perfect. All right, so we will keep moving, guys. So let's continue along. So for the next part, I do need to come out of the um, the presentation mode for a minute. Hopefully, that would make sense when I'm out. So just give me a second. All right, discard. So why is it that computer vision when it's so simple it's so uh, like i mean why is it that people are having uh, challenges around it right so everybody should be able to do it the idea is that it is not very easy right because let's say i've built an algorithm to detect a parrot now the parrot the algorithm that i've trained is the parrot is looking this way right now what if my parrot is rotated like this right or what if I tilt the parrot in a different direction, right? So there are many, many things uh, that could be happening. So the idea is that your algorithms, when they are being trained, they can learn the parrot from one angle, but the moment, or, I, or if I take my parrot and make it jump up and down, like in a movie, right? And then I ask my algorithm to go ahead and recognize this parrot, it will be very, very difficult for the algorithm, right? So that's where the complexity lies. So it sounds very trivial on the surface, but uh, obviously there are complexities that we should be all aware of, right? Now, this is uh, a parrot which looks somewhere close to a real parrot, for example. Now, if somebody says, okay, this is also a parrot, but this is a parrot that my daughter drew. I want, I want uh, your algorithm to recognize not only this parrot, but this parrot also, which the machine are gonna have a big challenge in terms of recognizing, right? So it does look like a parrot. I mean, for a three-year-old or five-year-old, um, you know, toddler, they will take, literally more than i mean less than one second to recognize that this is a parrot right so they have this uh, ability to recognize that but we don't have that in the machine so that's where the challenge lies in terms of you know teaching them the ability to recognize the object not necessarily in one shape and form but in a variety of different shape and form so that um, when i show you a cat the cat may be sleeping walking dancing uh, you know, or doing whatever, and you should still be able to recognize that cat. Similarly, the objects on the road, because the people are not going to be standing on the footpath all the time. Some people will be trying to cross the road. Some people will be walking on the side of the road. So the car should be smart enough to recognize, yes, that I am looking at a person, and uh, yes or no, I have a safe distance with that person, and how should I actually take a decision and move forward or not, right? So those are some of the complexities involved in there. So next, what I'm going to do is actually help you give some background uh, and I will play a video and let's see if you guys have any difficulty to watch this video. Otherwise, just uh, voice over that. So let me try that and see whether it works. So it will open up in a new window. And uh, I will share this link. In fact, I have already shared this link with you uh, in the slide share. People who have joined a little bit late, I have already put the presentation in the slide share link that I have posted at the front of the deck. And I will do it again towards the end so you can reference this material later on. And let me know if you can hear the video. So this is a short Human video. Vision is amazingly can you hear it, Anmol? And complex. 
It all started billions of years ago. Yes, I thought we can hear it. Okay, that perfect. Made them sensitive to light. Fast forward to today, and there's an abundance of life on the planet, which all have very similar visual systems. They include eyes for capturing light, receptors in the brain for accessing it, and a visual cortex for processing it. Genetically engineered and balanced pieces of a system, which help us do things as simple as appreciating a sunrise. This is really just the beginning. In the past 30 years, we've made even more strides to extending this amazing visual ability, not just to ourselves, but to machines as well. The first type of photographic camera was invented around 1816 where a small box held a piece of paper coated with silver chloride. When the shutter was open, the silver chloride would darken where it was exposed to light. Now, 200 years later, we have much more advanced versions of the system that can capture photos right into digital form. So we've been able to closely mimic how the human eye can capture light and color. But it's turning out that that was the easy part. Understanding what's in the photo is much more difficult. Consider this picture. My human brain can look at it and immediately know that it's a flower. Our brains are cheating since we've got a couple million years worth of evolutionary context to help immediately understand what this is. But a computer doesn't have that same advantage. To an algorithm, the image looks like this, just a massive array of integer values, which represent intensities across the color spectrum. There's no context here, just a massive pile of data. It turns out that the context is the crux of getting algorithms to understand image content in the same way that the human brain does. And to make this work, we use an algorithm very similar to how the human brain operates using machine learning. Machine learning allows us to effectively train the context for a data set so that an algorithm can understand what all those numbers in a specific organization actually represent. And what if we have images that are difficult for a human to classify? Can machine learning achieve better accuracy? For example, let's take a look at these images of sheepdogs and mops, where it's pretty hard even for us to differentiate between the two. With the machine learning model, we can take a bunch of images of sheepdogs and mops, and as long as we feed it enough data, it will eventually be able to properly tell the difference between the two. Computer vision is taking on increasingly complex challenges and is seeing accuracy that rivals humans performing the same image recognition task. But like humans, these models aren't perfect. They do sometimes make mistakes. The specific type of neural network that accomplishes this is called a convolutional neural network, or CNN. CNNs work by breaking an image down into smaller groups of pixels called a filter. Each filter is a matrix of pixels, and the network does a series of calculations on these pixels, comparing them against pixels in the specific patterns the network is looking for. In the first layer of a CNN, it is able to detect high-level patterns like rough edges and curves. As the network performs more convolutions, it can begin to identify specific objects like faces and animals. How does a CNN know what to look for and if its prediction is accurate? This is done through a large amount of labeled training data. When the CNN starts, all of the filter values are randomized. As a result, its initial predictions make little sense. Each time the CNN makes a prediction against labeled data, it uses an error function to compare how close its prediction was to the image's actual label. Based on this error or loss function, the CNN updates its filter values and starts the process again. Ideally, each iteration performs with slightly more accuracy. What if instead of analyzing a single image, we want to analyze a video using machine learning? At its core, a video is just a series of image frames. To analyze a video, we can build on our CNN for image analysis. In still images, we can use CNNs to identify features, but when we move to video, things get more difficult since the items we're identifying might change over time. Or more likely, there's context between the video frames that's highly important to labeling. For example, if there's a picture of a half full cardboard box, we might wanna label it packing a box or unpacking a box, depending on the frames before and after it. This is where CNNs come up lacking. They can only take into account spatial features, the visual data in an image, but can't handle temporal or time features, how a frame is related to the one before it. To address this issue, we have to take the output of our CNN and feed it into another model which can handle the temporal nature of our videos. This type of model is called a recurrent neural network, or RNN. Okay, guys, um, so I will pause over here. I think there's much more in the video you can watch later on. <clears throat> but in interest of time, I will uh, like to stop over here and talk about maybe uh, 
few key pieces over here, right? And I will uh, just uh, use my system um, to sort of like, you know, draw that. The <clears throat> one of the main thing that you have learned over here in this video is that human eyes have been trained for at least two million years, right? So when you say a baby can recognize uh, somebody very, very easily, it's not like the baby has just uh, started to recognize the object when uh, he or she is born. The genetics that we are born with has already told us. Uh, so there is an inherent thing that we are already born with and that evolution has happened over millions of years, right? So we really cannot expect the computer to be uh, learning and doing the same thing as we have been doing in terms of the CV because they just haven't had the opportunity to train on that much of data, right? So that's the first thing I would like to take out from there. The second thing is that the computers do not see the images. They see the digits, right? And I will talk about that a little bit when I'm doing the demo. Uh, they do not see the image. They do not see a flower. They do not see a cat. They do not see a car, right? They see the digits, right? And each of the digits are represented in terms of a matrix that I will briefly talk about when I'm doing the demo. And that is how they actually are able to reconstruct that uh, image, right? The third thing is that the algorithms, which are very, very popular for doing the computer vision are CNN, which is Convolution Neural Network. And I have a blog uh, in my uh, datafy.com blog where you can actually read more about that in terms of what are the different layers, what is a filter, what is a convolution layer, uh, you know, and so on and so forth, you can go there. And then the other thing the lady mentioned was another network called the recurrent neural network, right? So CNN works good for static images in general, uh, when the, you know, the subject does not change over a period of time, it's not over a period of time, the images is not refreshed. But when you look at a video, a video is exactly that, that as the time passes, the image keeps on changing and a video is nothing but a collection of images over a period of time. So that's where you have to combine the CNN and RNN together to really uh, come out with the image recognition and the video recognition and so on and so forth, right? And the last thing which I'm gonna mention over here is the for any sort of algorithms to really work, what they need is the labeled data. Right. When I say label data, you need to tell the computer, you need to uh, show the computer, let's say 1000 images or 2000 images of the cat in all the different, uh, like I mean, shape and form, the color and all of that. And teach the computer first that when you look at something like this, that's a cat. When you look at something like this, that's a dog. Right. So you need labeled images. And that's uh, one of the biggest challenges in the industry. So if you want to be going and doing something in the medical world, for example, you want to build um, an algorithm, a CNN algorithm to detect the, I don't know, lung cancer, for example, right? What you need to do is to give it millions of observations of the images and just not that, a doctor or uh, an expert has to really look at each image and classify whether this is a normal or this is an abnormal X-ray or MRI, right? And that is how a system is gonna learn. So you can figure out the challenge is actually having tons and tons of images, having them labeled and then feeding them into the convolution neural network or RNN or something of that nature. And all of these networks, uh, the networks that we're talking about are what we call as the <clears throat> deep learning networks right so learning network because they have many many layers of neurons the only difference between a cnn and the other um, networks like an uh, lstm or mlp is that the in neurons are in th three dimensions right so it's a little bit faster and more suitable for images but that's more complex conversation for a different day so i will now switch back to the presentation and walk you through something very very simple that everyone can try right now right but before I do that, I just want to draw your attention on what are the things uh, that people use um, as the tools and techniques for doing the computer vision. So in the first part, uh, you see we have some of the packages and uh, you know some of the most popular packages for the computer vision, at least in Python and C++ and including Java, uh, uh, OpenCV, Dlib, and so on and so forth, right? We will be leveraging 
a package called this is a python package it might be existing in the other languages as well i'm not too sure but i am going to use python for it we will be leveraging a package called face recognition right and this package does not just do the fake uh, face recognition and tell you whether this is a human face or not but it can also do a match uh, whether uh, this is a known person unknown person whether this is an image of barack obama and so on and so forth right all of that can be done uh, obviously these packages are also very very useful and then there are plug and play services from pretty much all the big tech uh, companies i may have missed out few over here so by no means this is a comprehensive list for either the top portion or on the bottom portion uh, i will do a demo of the google uh, cloud vision ai very very simple to use very very fun to use um, you may find something useful <laughs> right away if you implement that um, then there is an amazon recognition and there is microsoft azure and i'm sure there will be something available from other companies ibm nvd and all of that that you can go ahead and try out but i will just talk about these two uh, one is the face recognition demo using python and the other one is the google api and i will begin with the google api because this is the most basic you do not need to write even one line of code for it it's as simple as that right so that is the flow people and i'm just looking at the time so it's already um, <clears throat> 5:30 so let me show you the google api demo first and then we will take it from there right and all the things you don't have to memorize you don't have to take like uh, any detailed notes everything is sort of mentioned in my slides you just need to follow that link and you will find this right so the first thing that you got to do is go to this link right over here uh, it says uh, cloud.google.com.vision right when you come over here you will see an interface like this obviously i'm you know i'm going to take you live and show you live there as well so you will see something like this right um, and what you have to do is if you want to do face recognition if you want to do whole uh, host of things like the sentiment analysis and stuff like that uh, in a very very simple way you just grab any image and drop it over here like I said, it does not require any coding of anything that nature. You just grab your image, whatever you want to analyze, and dump it over there, and it will do the rest things for you, right? So in this first one, I'm, I will, I'm just going to show you first what I'm doing, and then I will show you uh, live there with one image. So in this case, the image that I uploaded was my image, right? So I uploaded this image on that interface. And the first thing that it shows from that image is the sort like the sentiment analysis right and there's a lot of uh, art and science behind how the sentiment analysis is done so the first thing that it does is to recognize the face and then within the face it will look for the expressions in terms of the eyes the the lips and the position of the you know chain and so on and so forth to really figure out you know are you mad angry sad surprise so on and so forth right uh, it will try to figure out something so i typically have a poker face so that's why it's not able to uh, you know uh, judge any of the sentiments on my screen uh, there is a little bit of the joy uh, because i have you know a slight smile there but you can figure out it's pretty accurate in terms of capturing the sentiment of that right when i uploaded the image the tool did not know whether i'm uploading the image of a cat or dog or cow or myself right so it will look into the uh, sort of like dimensions of that it will look into the feature of the image and it will come back and say i have recognized an object for you and that object is nothing but a man uh, with a 91 percent confidence level right so that's pretty cool so you can uh, upload any image of your choice and you can find out what exactly you're looking at and i will do that i mean i mostly have the faces because uh, my topic is more on the facial recognition but i will have some other interesting images as well right so let's keep going forward so then it also sort of like gives you the labels of the things that it is able to glean from from the image so it will be able to tell you that i can spot a forehead in this picture i spot a chin the person who is in the image looks like a white collar worker because maybe i'm wearing a jacket and so on and so forth there's a slight smile the feature i really loved about this and the feature that you guys will be able to use immediately is that if you have an image of a person you can upload that image and you can figure out wherever that image has been used i mean it's not a comprehensive list uh, by any means but I found it to be very, very interesting, right? So it will tell you wherever this image has been used. So for example, I was a presenter in the analytics with their data hackathon. It's there, right? Uh, there is, you know, from IIT, 
there is you know slide share there is a bunch of posts on the quora and so on and so forth and every time i click on any of these links i mean i'll find that my image is indeed there right so that's pretty cool actually in terms of you being able to just by looking at the image of the person finding out where exactly this image has been used right and this is another great feature right uh, this is all by the way click of a button and i'll show you the demo when i do that uh, it says what is this image associated with right and uh, this is basically looking into the terms the context uh, the content of the websites where your image has been there and so on and so forth right and there's a confidence score that score will range between zero to uh, one like i mean you can imagine like a probability right so if the confidence score is zero that means there is a least confidence right so the the highest confidence or the highest probability comes out with the data science right and data science is something which i i'm very very passionate about and i live and read that so there's no wonder that i mean most of the times my image is associated associated with the data science Obviously, all the synonyms of data science, like the analytics, data analysis, everything of that nature is sort of like incorporated there. I do work for a finance company or the fintech company. Uh, so there's a finance uh, coming up there and so on and so forth, right? So that's all good. So that was, you know, a very plain vanilla image, right? So I said, why don't we make it a little bit more complex and throw a much more funny image on that, right? So I uploaded this image along with some of the text on the image, right? So you see four guys over here and um, they are quite funny looking people, right? In terms of what they're trying to show. Um, <clears throat> so, all right, so we will address the questions towards the end guys. So um, I know, I mean, there might be a lot of questions. So just hold on to that. We'll answer towards the end. You have my email, you have my other contact details. You can send it to me later on also, right? So there is an image that you uploaded uh, based on that image. Uh, the joy angle is coming up over here very, very clearly. And I think most of these guys have that sort of thing. Um, you know, the object analysis comes out as man again, no surprises. Um, then in terms of the image label, um, it's saying, you know, pretty much all of them have the facial hair as well. So it could be something related to the facial hair. It could be a poster, it could be an advertising, a mustache, uh, photography, and so on and so forth, right? Um, then the entry is associated with this because I have already used this uh, image for doing, I mean, when I built a recommendation engine, I have used this image. So they say that, okay, this image has been associated with Atnakar Pandey, which is indeed the case. I got it from Giphy, but they are absolutely right that I have used it. And there are some other labels as well, right? The last part, which I did not show in the previous picture, is the OCR, which is the optical character recognition part. So if there are um, any text in your images, like, I mean, you have a driving license, for example, or Aadhaar number, right? So imagine that you have an Aadhaar number and you would like to get the Aadhaar number rather than have somebody manually take it out and then keep it in a database because that is a very, very time consuming process. Uh, and it could also be very, very error uh, prone process as well, right? So in this case, you can see how easily it has pulled up uh, the sort of like, you know, the text from it. And it is telling you that in this page that you're telling me, there are two different blocks of text. The first block of the text is a strong recommend and the second is via gift, which is exactly right on the point. And uh, then finally, in terms of uh, the safe search, uh, whether the image has any sort of like, you know, content which might be objectionable to the community, uh, it's not adulterated. Um, so spoof, very, very likely it's some sort of spoof based on the images and the face expressions that people have and so on and so forth. And it has again, you know, very likely and likely scale. So that's the first part of the demo. That is a no brainer. Anyone and everyone can go ahead and try that. And I will actually show you very quickly so I think I may have it open somewhere. If not, then I will open it up. Yeah, so this is the link I have it open, right? So what you have to do is to just go and refresh that very quickly. So this is the page that you will be coming on, right? And it has a bunch of details, guys. People who are more technical, uh, you can get the XML output, you can get the JSON output, you can connect your APIs using the REST uh, and our curl and stuff like that. I'm not going to go in any of those details because that is not relevant for all of us in this audience. So you can actually go ahead and try it out. But nevertheless, I mean, you know that, I mean, if I want to automate this process, yes, I can do that. And obviously they have a paid version of this 
which is where you can do things at the scale but we're just playing with this uh, at this point of time so what i'm going to do is i will grab another image right so let me see what image i'm going to grab something that we haven't seen earlier so i have hidden challenge 300 yeah okay that's fine so what i will do is click on this and i will point to the hidden challenge 300 and uh, it will verify that i'm not a robot which is indeed the case and it will take a short while so you can imagine while we are talking it is actually sending this data on the cloud and it is running all the algorithms that we've talked about earlier right and it is coming out with the a uh, quick summary so it says there is a headwear right i'm just quickly going to walk through there is a woman in the picture there's a person in the picture there's a hat in the picture right uh, beauty skin spring so on and so forth where exactly this image is found on the web pages and there is you know a couple of text right in this case you can see there's a little bit of the confusion which is coming in so it says garden z secret so maybe there is a z hidden somewhere because it's supposed to be a hidden challenge i don't know but it is able to do a decent job in terms of picking up the text from it right um and then obviously in terms of the safe search there's a scoop or not right so this is a quick demo of the google vision and you can actually try it out very very quickly on your own it doesn't take any amount of coding and this is very very simple to use for all of us right and i think there could be some applications that you can point out all right so this concludes the part one of that guys i'm running out of the time so i'm gonna jump quickly on more the coding way which is what we like so for this next part, uh, we will be leveraging few things. We will be leveraging what we call as a Google Colab. Some of you may have already used it. We will be leveraging very, very popular library for the computer vision. This is actually not a, a new library. This was a library that Intel came out in 1999, but it's gaining prominence now because of all the things happening around the computer vision that we have talked about, right? Uh, we will leverage the package called face recognition and we will leverage the GPU and Python, but thankfully you don't have to worry about the GPU and Python. They will automatically come with the Google Colab and I will tell you how to set it up for you, right? Uh, but any type of image recognition or any type of uh, CV related activities, you are advised not to do it on your CPU because your CPUs won't be able to handle that, right? So you are strongly advised to use a GPU and leverage that to uh, your benefit, right? So Google has made it free for all of us. So for people who have never been exposed to what is a Google Colab, I have already shared the link in the previous slide. So the first thing what you're gonna do is uh, when you go to Google Colab, it will say welcome and on so on and so forth. You will say, okay, please go ahead and open a new Python 3 notebook, which is you're gonna open from over here. Right, so that's the first step that you got to do. The second thing that you want to do is change it to something. So change, uh, basically rename it to something that you remember. So I'm going to call it face recognition, for example. You can just type over there and you can change it. And then you have to connect. And there are two uh, possible options for connecting um, your Google Colab. And all you need to use for Google Colab, at least at this point of time, is a valid Google Gmail ID, right? Um, there's nothing else that is required. You don't have to separately sign up. As long as you have a Gmail ID, you are good to go with the Google Colab, right? So it's it's very, very simple to get in, right? So don't click on the local time, local runtime. You have to click on the hosted, which is basically you're running this on the cloud. But we're not done yet in terms of the setup. The third thing that you got to do is you have to come in into the runtime and from the runtime you have to select the change runtime and then select it to gpu if you don't select the gpu when you run some of the codes that i'm going to talk about it will throw an error for you right uh, because the package that we will be using will require a gpu and you don't have gpu on your machine most of you would not have a gpu on your machine so you will find an error coming up right so make sure that you do the setup and then you're good to go right and the next thing that you're gonna do after you have done this is basically upload the files in the Google Colab environment. And when you, and I'll show you in a minute, the actual Google Colab environment. The first thing you do is basically click on files, then you say upload, and then you upload the files that you want to play with in this, right? So in this case, I think I'm using one picture from uh, Mr. Obama, president of, uh, ex-president of US, right? And I'm using another picture which is the same mustache guys that you've seen earlier for doing the demo, right? So 
then you will install. I'm just going to give you a walkthrough and then I will actually take you to the Google Colab and then show you what exactly is going to happen, right? So these packages are not pre-installed in most of the time. So you need to do the pip install for the face recognition, which is the package that we're going to use. We will do the pip install for the OpenCV Python, which is another package that we're going to use. And uh, then we will import the necessary packages, right? And then we will read this image in so for example you can see um, that we are importing the image of obama but the tool does not know the coding language does not know whether this is obama or whether there's a person or not so we will not even go to the extent of recognizing the person we will just say is there a human face and where exactly is the human face right and then we will run our algorithm which is the convolution neural network um, and it's all being handled in the background for you. Um, obviously, there are settings that you can play with, but I'm just going to uh, keep it plain vanilla as of now. And then what you will see happening is that it will say, yes, I have identified a face and the face is located in these coordinates. And uh, then you say, okay, fine, please go ahead and uh, draw a blue box like you see in your camera whenever you have uh, camera pointed at the person. I mean, automatically it will show that I recognize the face. That's exactly what the camera is also doing uh, up to a lower extent, right? So that's what we've done that we have said, okay, yes, this is the face. And if I just wanted to strip out that face, I will run a certain code and I will walk you through the code in terms of the logic, depending on the time, and you will strip out the face of the person, right? Similarly, okay, that's fine. Uh, I had only one person, so that was probably easy for the software. How about this, right? And how about this particular guy who is hidden right in the background? Can my uh, algorithm be smart enough to pick up this guy? So let's give it a try, right? Let's give it a try. So again, I'm gonna do the same thing and you can see it has automatically detected four faces and the four location of the faces. When I do the boxes, you can see, yes, indeed, it is able to recognize all the four human faces and uh, we are good to go, right? So all four faces have been recognized. So I'll, I'm just gonna give you a quick tour of the code. Um, like I said earlier, this is all available along with whatever you have seen in my, uh, in my presentation that I've shared with you. So I'm just gonna walk you through uh, so that you know what we are doing. So I'm just gonna refresh that. This is the same Jupyter notebook that I've talked about. <clears throat> and uh, I think we are almost getting out of the time guys. So I will, um, you know, do a quick demo and then open up for any Q and A. So what you gotta do is, uh, so most of the times you will see that this may be, when you open up, it may not show you the files, right? But you can see there is a slider button over here. Uh, where my mouse is hovering. So you just click on that slider button and click on the files. And then uh, I think it's still connecting. So let it connect first. I will show you the connection steps first. Once it is connected, then I can uh, run the code. So it's initializing right now. All right, so it says connected, right? And now you can see this value is populated. So remember we have to go in the runtime and say change run type type right now it's selected on gpu so i'm good to go and then if you run it right now because every time you refresh your google drive or the google collab the images and all the data are dumb so you don't have that data anymore so i'm going to upload those pictures so i'm going to grab the picture of men so that's one thing it gives you certain warning you can ignore that right and then i'm going to upload one more picture which is mr obama and that is the picture that I want, right? So <clears throat> it should be uploaded in a minute as well. So while it's, so now you can see I have both images uploaded. One is in the JPEG, the other one is in the PNG format, doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm gonna install the face recognition. It should not take very long time. It should go very quickly. So you can see it's doing the installation, right? It's all good, building wheels. If you do it in your Jupyter notebook environment on your local system, that may take longer. Uh, you can still make it work, but uh, it has a lot of dependencies which may not be easily built for you. All right. So <clears throat> it says you are good to go, right? So then I'm gonna install the OpenCV Python package that should go fast. And then I'm gonna import the necessary packages. People who are familiar with Python, NumPy is almost um, sort of like, you know, the bread and butter for the people who are working in the Python. All the images are stored as the NumPy arrays. As I told you earlier, they're all digitized, right? So you need to import that. 
CV2 is the open CV package that we've talked about. Face recognition is what we've talked about. And from PIL, which is the Python image library, I'm going to image uh, import the image, which will be used for plotting of the images, right? All right. So first thing that we got to do is now, since we have imported all the things, now we will import the image. And I have put very, very detailed comments over here. So I'm importing the image for face recognition and showing what exactly is it that we're importing, right? So face recognition dot load image Obama one dot JPEG and I'm showing the image and this is how the image looks like right. So one thing at this point of time guys I want to sort of like you know tell you that at image has uh, following features so it will have basically the pixels in X dimension it will have pixels in Y dimension and it will have the channel information right and channel information is nothing but the RGB so and uh, you could have channel as one you could have channel as three if channel is one that is like a plain uh, grayscale image if the channel is three you will have the colored image and you have the pixels uh, right so you can see this is the size of the pixels of the images that we have so i'm going to run my face location now which is the package face recognition dot face location on that image which image is already digitized in terms of the numpy array and the model that I'm running is the convolution neural network, right? So what I have done is I have put this image in a CNN model and I have this inbuilt method in the package called the face locations and it will look for those features and stuff like that that I mentioned earlier, the edges to really recognize where the face is. And it comes back and says, yes, we have a face and the face locations are 33, 151, 115 and 70, right? So it doesn't mean much. So what I will do uh, now is to show you what exactly that is, right? So what those locations are, and actually let me run the next line also. So it says the top of the image is starting at the pixel location 33, which is you know somewhere over here. That's exactly right. The bottom of the image is around 115, which is over here somewhere. That's about right. The left hand side of the image is at the pixel 70, which is right over here. And the right side of the image is at 151, which is right over here. So that's the face that we have highlighted. And it is uh, immediately able to recognize that face, right? So, so far, so good. Then what we can do is we can strip off this face. Okay, we say, okay, we don't care about the rest of the background. I just need to know the face of the person. So if you're running a surveillance and something like that, and you miscellaneous object, and you suddenly see a person who should not be there, you just want to know the face of the person. And then I'm saying, you know, you know what? From that image, please cut out this particular shape, which is just the image. And the code for that is that you want the top to bottom and left to right, and you are able to do that, right? The other thing I would like to highlight over here is, which goes back to my thought process over there, is that the the image is recognized in terms of the top left and bottom right corner and these 00255 they are nothing but the rgb scale so this is the red scale this is the uh, green scale and this is the blue scale so for example if i want to have a red block around it i will change the pixel uh, or the color intensity to 255 and make it 00 over here and you can see that instead of having a blue box i have a red block now right and similarly i can have a green block because i am modulating the rgb and if you change the rgb you can make any image look like um, i mean you can generate pretty much any color that you want to right so i'm going to revert back to the blue because that is what typically we use in the industry right so i'm just going to change that to blue and the last number that you're looking at is basically the thickness of the box that you're looking at right okay good so now what i'm going to do is do exactly the same thing but instead of importing obama i'm going to import the men images right and rerun the same thing there is some other portion of the code but i'm not going to go through all of that because i'm running out of the time so i'm just going to do the men images sorry uh, men images dot png the format is wrong png all right all right so that's the image we are interested in let's run that algorithm again so how many faces we have? One, two, three, four, right? I mean, just visually looking at our human eyes, you have four faces, one, two, three, four. And the CNN is also able to identify four faces. It says one face is located on this location, another face in this location, third face here and fourth face here. Okay, so I said, good. Let's go ahead and get the uh, faces in the blue box. Can you do it for me? And there you are, right? So it's able to do exactly what we have intended. 
for it to be doing, which is able to recognize the face. The package that we are looking at over here, guys, is very, very powerful. It can do a lot more than just the face recognition. So I'm going to talk about what else are the possibilities in this package, and you can try it out later on. So in this package, you can do um, sort of like, you know, the <clears throat> changing the facial features. So for example, if you want to draw the mustache on someone or put a lipstick on someone, you can do all of that. You can um, do identification of the people. You can have a database of the like criminals and you can run it with the database of all the people seen at the airport. You can match them. Uh, you can do the video analysis and all of that, right? So what is next? Uh, this is very, very important. So we, like, I mean, like the topic says, it's a prelude to what is being covered in the RACE 360 Emerging Technology Conference, which is happening in August 28th. And I'll be there for full day. I will be a panelist in one of the discussion. There are a bunch of demos that we have planned on the computer vision, live demos where you can go and try out different things on your own. There is a workshop that is also planned on the computer vision where you will get much more hands on practice on what you can do. So you can register that uh, for that event over here, right? Race360.in. Uh, the registration is still open. So I encourage all of you to be there. Um, whoever can attend, it's happening in Bangalore, uh, right? The second thing that you should do is if you are interested in CNN, RNN, LSTM, deep learning, data science, Python, and the whole nine yard you can visit my blog obviously you'll find tons of good information there uh, so don't miss that um, this is the link for the package that we have used which is the facial recognition do go ahead and take it take it out for a spin and there are finally once you get a good handle on the image recognition there are projects in kaggle where you can go ahead and try it out so for example this project that i'm mentioning about there is a, a prize money i don't know whether that is still the case or not 150k usd and you have to build an image recognition tool to identify tuna from other fishes and shark and so on and so forth as they are being loaded on the ship when they are fishing that, right? So those are some of the things that you should try. With that, I will rest and I will open up for the Q&A. Anmol? Hi, Ratnakar. Uh, you may take up the questions now. They're displaying in the questions. Sure. All right, so in the questions, let me open up. All right, so the bunch of questions is NLP in the base of the computer vision. I'm just going to read through the question and then see what are the themes which are emerging and let me know if I haven't answered. Uh, open CV library, are we using the biometric system by, yep, okay, good. Straight up. Can we see some code for the and what's exactly going to do in two sentences? I'm just reading your questions and then I'll come and answer that, right? Um, I'm just trying to find the themes. What are some other things which are coming on your radar? Okay, so a lot of you are asking uh, in terms of the setup challenges and all of that. So guys, I don't know whether you have uh, tried to set up on your like the local environment, uh, but if you try to set up in terms of the Google Collab, uh, you should not find any challenges. OpenCV library normally does not have a lot of challenges in the installation, but if you do face installation challenges, I recommend that uh, you try different settings. I mean, in terms of you know the different uh, environment, uh, maybe Anaconda, maybe Collab and stuff like that and see whether it works there. Normally, it should not have any challenges at all, right? Uh, some of you are saying whether the computer vision is also used for biometrics. You are exactly right. Uh, this actually plays a big role in terms of the biometrics identification for matching the images. Is NLP in the base of computer vision? Uh, there could be situations where there is NLP there as well, but the computer vision can be a standalone topic and most likely it's basically just about the image. And in a lot of cases, we do not even do any pre-processing of the images like any other um, software. For example, if you're doing NLP, you have to do a lot of cleaning of the data, you know, remove uh, different words, do the stemming and all of that. So none of that is required in the image. You can dump the raw image and it can be handled, right? 
Yes, we are using OpenCV and we are using Dlib, which is a C++ library. And we are using face recognition, which is again built on the C++ library. And uh, Python is a wrapper for that, right? Um, uh, can, how real-time object analysis can be achieved on a video streaming coming from the CCTV camera. So again, that goes back to the couple of networks that you've talked about. So you have to look into what is coming in, what is the expectation seeing in the video, and how some of the images may not look um, sort of like, you know, in place at that time. And that is how the recognition is done. So it will be done with the algorithms that we've talked about but you have to do a little bit of the more work on it, but video analysis can also be handled. The real-time video analysis can also be handled by the tool that we've discussed, right? Uh, code I have already shared Vine, with you and you can go through it later on. What hardware can I use for edge computing for doing real-time object detection on a live stream? You need to have at least, uh, you know, a decent machine with a GPU. If you don't have it, you can always go work with, uh, you know, places like Azure, um, and you can have um, IBM, you can have NVIDIA, you can have Google platform, you can have Databricks, right? There are tons of options available. I'm not recommending any one of them. All right. Can we uh, compatible with G Tinker GUI package? I am not too sure, Sumit. I will have to think about it. Uh, compatibility wise with some of the other things. I am from embedded background. How can I switch to CV learning Python? See, the data science is, uh, I mean, it used to be the case that everybody can do everything in data science. Nowadays, I mean, I've been here in this industry for 18 years now. I think now you have to build your area of focus, right? So if you're really passionate about the computer vision, then you should focus only in that area, right? I mean, then you don't need to necessarily worry about all the other different things. Similarly, if you want to do more in terms of the text mining and doing NLP and stuff like that, that also requires a great deal of effort, right? So I think you need to be like, I mean, aware about all the fundamentals, but then you need to really build an area of expertise, whether it's a computer vision, whether it's something else, and see whether that is something that you really enjoy. And it also depends on the field that you're looking at, right? So if uh, I'm a medical professional and I'm analytically uh, inclined towards doing something, probably computer vision makes much more sense because that's where it's being heavily used, right? If I am in the, let's say, uh, operational world, then I have to look into more of the optimization algorithms and stuff like that. If I'm in the banking and financial, I mean, probably you're gonna need everything, right? All of that nature. Okay, so that's that. Can we detect car accident on videos through CV? Absolutely, it's just about the training, Chirag. Uh, so let's say you know that this is how a normal road should look like. My intersection should look like this normally, right? So you say this is good. When you have an accident, uh, you say this is an accident, right? And the, the tool will be learned, right? But the crux of that is you need to have images to train in, right? So you need to have a lot of car accident images to train on. It will just not be able to pick up. I mean, you can obviously do some bootstrapping and stuff like that, but generally you have to have the label data. Um, so similarly, I mean, some of uh, you uh, may have questions about, can I, uh, for example, if car has been involved in an accident, can I know how big is the damage in the car? Absolutely you can, right? But then again, you need to be having those images and then the estimation by the mechanics in terms of if the damage is this much, how much is the thing, right? And then you can build a um, business around it where you can actually have people upload their damaged car images and you can actually tell them how much it's gonna cost. I think there are already some applications like this in the market. There are many, many other things, uh, Rafiuddin. Like I said, I mean, this is just a starter. I mean, I'm not claiming that within one hour you will know the entire gamut of the computer vision, but hopefully it gave you some sense and uh, I mean, if nothing else, I mean, I uh, believe that it should have taken out the fear from you that uh, what is CV, I don't know anything about that, right? So, I mean, it's very simple, just like anything else uh, in this world, you just need to be sort of like, you know, going in and trying to, um, you know, learn more about that, right? And that's what that boils down to, um, not that complex. I'm doing a project for face recognition from drone images. Can you suggest me an efficient algorithm for doing it? Will deep learning be better? Uh, Ruby, I think probably this question we can take offline since you're already doing a bunch of things there. I would like to get more context on it and what is the data that you have, and then we can take it from there. Is Raspberry Pi sufficient for CV? Sure, Sandeep, I think there's no harm in trying that. 
guys let me know uh, we are already 5 minutes over time any other questions that i have not answered for you i'll be more than happy to jump in and anmol if there is anything that uh, i haven't gone through from your point of view just let me know i'll be happy to take a look i have doctor all questions answered so far uh, audience if you feel uh, that your answer a question has not been answered you can also get in touch with ratnakar or on his email id that is rp data science at the red gmail dot com he will be very happy to answer the questions any more questions right. closing the questions as soon as possible now and uh, the presentation is already uploaded over in this link guys so make sure that you visit and you can download the presentation the slide share link that i've shared with you that already has the latest presentation that i'm sharing with you yeah Pratakar, I've shared uh, one last question with you uh, from Saiket Goswami. If you could have a look. Okay, just a second. From Saiket, you're saying, right? Yeah. Okay, just a second. Okay. Is the okay? Yeah, second go, Swami. I see that. Yeah, can you share some pointers to train the model used by face recognition library to recognize new faces? People sometimes the model cannot know the faces in new images. Any pointers to improve the model performance? Any pointers on how to work on OCR problems? Yeah, so second, in terms of the improvement of the model, um, I think I mean, you know, face recognition will take you. Um, only so far right uh, if you really want to build a model which is gonna go into production and bunch of people are gonna use it and there's gonna be a whole lot of business impact uh, probably you have to begin with something more fundamental like an open cv right and in terms of improvement of the accuracy again it's just like any other model uh, that you look into right so it's basically how is the data that you're feeding in and how much data you have and then what are the hyperparameters tuning that you're doing for the network that you're having how many neurons how many layers uh, what sort of filters that you are actually letting it come up what sort of activation function you're looking at right uh, and then over a period of time the network itself is going to come back and then give you a more optimal solution on it but that is uh, you know more like a trial and error and the grid search and you know more hyperparameter optimization algorithm sort of things right but you need to have good labeled images to begin with. If you do not have that data, then you already have a handicap, no matter what good an algorithm or how good machine you are having, that will not work. Okay, any other questions, guys, before we wrap it up? I hope you uh, learned something, enjoyed, and you can deploy at least some of the things that you saw over here. Um, like I said, it's not very complicated. It's you know something anybody can do. Uh, and it has tremendous potential uh, from all the different walks of life and different areas that we come in from. Thank you so much, Ratnagar, for this really motivating and empowering session today. I would also like to thank all my attendees for joining this session and making this session a great success. The session has been recorded and the recording will soon be available on techgig.com. Thank you everybody for joining us and a very special thank you to you Ratnaka for the insightful thoughts today. Thank you Anmol. I appreciate all your support and patience here. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye everyone.